Hey, hey, Marcus House with you here. Today we are building something that is, well, quite, quite frankly, it's pretty stupid actually, but you'll see why I'm building this uh, as we get towards the end of this episode. In short though, we are creating a gigantic platform with some lights here on top and that sort of thing, and we are rapidly uh, skimming through this uh, this footage just because, well, it's going to be a little boring if you sit here watching all this and it's going to drag the episode out too long. So yeah, what we're doing here is creating a, just a preliminary booster stage we'll test out and also adding a whole bunch of these separate probe core units up on top, so eight of these. And we are adding the tail fins here, um, which seem really odd to have this at the top of a vessel, but uh, as I said, this is going to serve a very unique purpose on Minmus. Just under here, we're going to build a big platform made out of these wing connectors. Now, I'm not going to show the full build of this because it just took too long. So, uh, fast forwarding here. And there we go. So, we've added some thrusters to the bottom of this platform with some solar panels. And I think the best thing to do is probably attach this thing vertically to the side because it's not going to be very aerodynamically sensible. And as Scott Manley says there, I need to check that staging because that didn't work at all. We'll just do a quick adjustment there and we'll re-attempt this. So off we go here, we'll take this thing for a fly. Really, I just want to see if it will be aerodynamically stable. Um, it probably won't be. And uh, yes, so we definitely need more vectoring and steering capabilities on this thing. Uh, let's just add another booster to the side of this thing. That'll give us a bit more thrust to weight, a little bit more steering capability. Um, and yeah, we'll send this thing out to the pad, give it another test. <laughs> and yes, that's, that's even worse. That was a stupid idea. So yeah, let's add a whole heap of vector engines instead of that mammoth engine there. We'll put on a whole heap of these airplane tail fins as well, A, because they look cool, and it's going to lower that center of lift. So this one looks like it's flying quite a bit more stable. We are going to need more fuel tanks, and we'll need to set up some asparagus staging. So uh, after just a little bit more modifications, here we go. Now, I, I kind of know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, what the hell are you trying to do? It's like trying to fly a mattress. It's just, it doesn't make any sense. That's the, definitely the silliest uh, vessel I've ever tried to make. That's for damn sure. The purpose of this thing will be revealed, so stay with me. We have Verissa Kerman here in the pilot seat. And off we launch. Now the thrust to weight ratio of this thing is around 1.4, so it has a load of thrust. What we want to do is get this thing above the atmosphere as fast as possible because the atmospheric drag on this vessel is just ridiculous. As I said, it really is the most impractical, stupid vessel I've ever built. So yes, we have the vector engines there on the central core booster, the two outside boosters just using the mammoth, uh, the mammoth engines there. Now, those two outside boosters, they have got external fuel ducts pumping fuel into that central core, so we're going to ditch these. And we're not going to ditch them, though, until we get above that 70 kilometers in altitude with our apoapsis, though. Uh, so, yes, that uh, that's coming up here shortly. Just disabling those engines there. As our apoapsis goes above 70 kilometers, we'll just physics warp until we get above that 70 kilometers in altitude, and we will now ditch those two side boosters, they're empty. So this next booster is going to get us all the way up to Minmus, and we'll actually try to uh, to impact the central core booster on Minmus itself so we don't have any space junk lying around because you all know how much I love space junk. So there we go there, we have a pretty good circularized orbit around Kerb, and what we'll do now is set Minmus as our target and uh, and set our maneuver. Now, I have timed this launch so that we will meet up with Minmus at the ascending node, so we don't need to do any inclination changes here to match Minmus. Doing this sort of thing, particularly if you are doing an interplanetary transfer, can save you a whole heap of delta V. Time warping around to that manoeuvre node there now, and we'll start that burn. This burn being just over 900 metres per second is going to get us right up to impact Minmus. What we do want to do though is leave enough fuel in our fuel tanks to transfer into the empty tanks that are on the side of our huge platform. So we emptied those out prior to liftoff simply so that the center of mass wasn't too wacky. So our burn is complete and we are on the way to Minmus. 
Now it is quite difficult to set up an impact on Minimus because it is such a light body and it's such a large distance away so as we get closer we can set up a slight, uh, a very small I should say maneuver just to, uh, to set up our impact. And yeah, you can see there it's literally only 7 meters per second that we need to, uh, to do this slight adjustment. In real life, of course, this is what happens in real missions. Small adjustments are made the closer you get to a target. Um, and that's simply because um, it's too hard to be that precise from such a large distance away. Just one tiny fraction of a meter per second can mean thousands of kilometers at the target body. As we get close to Minmus, we are going to start preparing our vessel here. Uh, we've got a few parts to stick together and we've got a booster to detach. Before that though, we need to transfer all of the remaining fuel out of that booster stage into our four, uh, our four tanks here that are around the outside of our platforms. We don't need a huge amount of fuel obviously to get down to Minmus. So uh, yeah, we'll see how we went here. Transferring all this away. And there we go there, so all four of those fuel tanks are basically about halfway full. So we'll decouple this thing, we're going to uh, separate the platform. And yes, just um, slightly thrusting forwards here using our RCS, just to bring that core booster out of the way before we detach the tower uh, with Verissa Kerman aboard. Now this is a fairly long tower with a small docking port at the end and we're, you know, we're trying to dock with a very small uh, docking target on the platform itself so our docking port alignment indicator again is our best friend here. Firstly rolling our vessel until that little orange marker there points straight up on the indicator panel. Using those I, J, K and L keys, we want to try to keep that little yellow marker pointing at where the two green lines cross over. As we get in closer there, we can use our stability assist to point at the target at all times, meaning we don't have to worry so much about our rotation controls there with the RCS. Using those H and N keys just to control the velocity we are approaching the docking port with, just keeping that yellow marker pointed towards the green cross there. And there we go, we are docked there. So now that we are docked, of course, the first thing we need to do is alter our trajectory so we don't smash into uh, Minmus ourselves. That would be uh, a very short episode and uh, quite disastrous for Verissa Kerman here. Just setting up a maneuver node here so that we can come down quite close to a reasonably perfect prograde orbit in Minmus. We'll of course be doing a small retrograde burn as we pass the periapsis there. Ooh, and my staging is totally mucked up there. We'll just rearrange that, otherwise we'll have all these top pieces flying out all over the place. Just a tiny little 26 meter per second burn there and passing now down to the periapsis and we'll come down, do a burn and fall into a Minmus orbit. And we'll attempt to land this thing in a location where we don't have uh, any other vessels. So the Greater Flats I think is probably a good spot to bring this thing down, a nice flat area. Turning on those lights there, you can see we have plenty of lighting on this vessel. We can light this platform right up if we need to in the dark. So Verissa Kerman has her work set out for her here. There is no other Kerbal in history that has ever tried to land a massive mattress on Minimus. So let's see how we go. Now it is of course easier to do a mission to Minmus rather than doing a mission to the moon and that's simply because of Minmus' surface gravity of only 0.49 meters per second squared. Now compare that to the moon at 1.63 meters per second squared and that makes the moon uh, three times more difficult, a little over three times more difficult to actually land on. So yeah, we're basically doing a very, very small burn with our thrusters just at around one quarter power just to slowly wipe off the velocity as we come in here. There's really not a great deal of, uh, of worry here when it comes to doing suicide burns. I mean, it just doesn't have enough gravity to really accelerate you too quickly. We'll just switch on the lights here so we can see how close we are to the surface as we come in. And... Crap, crap, crap. Oh, I've spun around. Ah, oh, worst landing ever, considering it's only Minmus. 
Oh dear, that's embarrassing. Okay, so uh, we have our platform here now, and we can now, I guess, get to the main point of this episode. So we are here setting up what I'm going to call uh, a Vexology biome. Uh, and uh, yes, I guess another name for this might be called Fun with Flags. Uh, thank you to Big Bang Theory for that idea. Now, this special platform here is going to be a shrine, if you will, uh, for those of you that have supported my channel and have even made significant impact on the channel as well. We will continue with this platform footage for many episodes to come, and Varissa Kerman here, she is going to be our assistant. She will be able to look out across a sea of supporters out there, and uh, yes, look, I'm going to be very proud to set this up. It's going to be a lot of fun. Now, what I am basically doing here between planting flags and things is pretty much hacking my quick save so that I have got a new flag set for Varissa. So we're dropping this first flag here now. This one here is from a user called Yoshi108108, and he has designed and sent this flag to me. He basically gets this one for being the very first commenter on many, many videos. I don't know if it's a competition for Yoshi, but uh, hey, you get a flag for that one, mate. Now the next flag I'm planting here is for James. Now James has been a very large commenter and has also had a number of private chats with me regarding different things and different missions that I can do. So thank you very much, James. You are awesome, buddy. Now a few of you may have noticed some comments in the channel regarding easter eggs. Now the very first easter egg that I put in one of my video thumbnails was found here by Aaron Thomas. So Aaron Thomas you get a flag. And we'll just take a break from planting flags at the moment. We're going to head up here, hop back in our seat and we're going to actually bring out the big guns. Now what I'm going to do here is decouple one of these modules that has the gigantic airplane tail fin. Now I'm basically going to use this little vessel to sit up on top of our platform and these very very large uh, flags I'll call them even though they're airplane tail fins, uh, these flags are going to be um, dedicated to contributors I guess that have had a even larger impact on my channel. Now, even though I have been the biggest contributor of my own channel, um, the Marcus House label is not going to be staying here. We're going to place this thing first, and then I'm going to hack my quick save to put a new logo on this particular module. So, just getting this positioned so that I'm happy with it. And we'll just do our little quick save hack reload. And of course, there's probably no surprise here that the very first massive flag goes to Mark Thrim. Now, Mark Thrim and I first met uh, back on Reddit, actually, when we both started our channels. And, uh, and Mark has been absolutely instrumental to keep motivated to do this YouTube thing that we do. In fact, for those of you that are fans of this channel, I'm <laughs> fairly certain this channel would not even be running if it wasn't for Mark Thrim. So yes, thank you, Mark, for all of the collaborations we've done. The Mars series, of course, was was a big one for us. And uh, yeah, for all of the chats that we've had uh, over the many weeks trying to figure out this YouTube thing. Now I have one more flag to put down here and that is for CrazyKiller101 who found the little easter egg in the thumbnail from just the video last week. So well done there CrazyKiller uh, and thank you for designing this flag and sending it to me, that's awesome. So thank you for watching. If you would like to be on one of these flags, you know what you need to do. I hope you did enjoy that video. Um, it's, <laughs> it was a bit of an odd vessel, I will say. Uh, please do take a second, give it a thumbs up. All of your support helps a huge amount. If you have any questions for me, please do whack them down in the comments below. Thank you very much to all of my wonderful subscribers and supporters. And for those that haven't yet, please do subscribe to see more. Follow me on Twitter at Marcus House Game, and we'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Just getting a little bit of air here now, or vacuum I should say. I probably should slow this thing down, but holy crap that's what you get for looking backwards while driving. Now I refer you back to page 255 paragraph C of the truck manual which is